You say there are not a whole lot of good quarterbacks to go around, not 32 of them. Yeah. Russell Wilson used to be one of those. He used to be one of those. There's some debate on whether he's still one of those. But we do know for sure he's still the Denver Broncos quarterback. Yes. And now we know for sure who his coach will be. Sean Payton is back in the NFL on the coaching sideline and not in a Fox studio. The Denver Broncos are sending first and second round picks to the Saints. So it's the 29th overall because Denver's it's traded their top, top pick away to Seattle. Yeah. Who gets that one? Right. Um, and Denver gets uh, Sean Payton. He gets a, they get a 2024 third round pick. Right. So do you think Sean Payton can fix whatever's wrong with the Broncos offense? I think this is like a blessing in disguise. You know, first off, the Broncos thing was weird in general. I, I think it was getting to the point where people were going like, wait, what the hell is going on in Denver? What's taking so long? This is like was kind of the most coveted job out there, yet they can't seem to kind of come to terms with anybody here, right? You know, whether it's the rumors of too many cooks in the kitchen during right. the interview process, whatever, right? It was starting, I think, to the football world looking like Denver looks kind of like dysfunctional right now, or what the hell are they doing here, right? Uh, I do think there was trepidation on the Sean Payton hiring because of, yes, the price tag that you're going to have to pay him, and then two, the comp- compensation you just laid out, right? Yeah. Nobody just wants to give away a first round pick, let alone a second round pick, too. Uh, so that that I think made things tough. And he's going to make like twenty million, I think. Well, is I would think he's going to be there. in that ballpark, right? I think that's about where the top coaches are now. And well, also, with Walmart Sean, has that money. Well, they know. definitely have that money. I think it's it's in their their couch cushions. But then, like the the other thing too is with you know, hey, Sean Payton, you take him, you, you know, that's it's a huge personality. He's a controlling personality. He's going to be the sergeant general of the franchise. I don't care who your GM GM is. He's coming in. He's the man now. So I'm sure there's who knows what was going on behind there. And then here's the other thing that you might have heard me say this to Floria today. I don't know how much you heard of us, but, you know, like there was a talk of D'Amico Ryan yesterday. There was a late push by Denver. I don't know where that came from. I know that some people are reporting that I have no inkling of that happening at all. Now, what I do know is that Denver was deep into the conversations with Jim Harbaugh again this weekend, right? I mean, it was Jim was in the mix from how I've been told by people connected to the situation is all weekend. Jim was in Denver. We're going back and forth. And he was, I guess, a little on the fence either way. Blah, blah, blah. Finally came no Sunday and they started to negotiate with Sean Payton. And that's when it happened. All right. And they got it done. So my point is one blessing in disguise. They didn't get Jim Harbaugh. Oh, that was the disguise part of it. Why, why do you think they did it? You think that was to leverage Sean Payton? No, a bit? I think they really want him. I think he was their number one target. You think Jim Harbaugh was the number one target? Definitely, yes, a hundred percent. I think he was their number one target. Right? I think he was the number one target to begin with. They went through this whole search. They couldn't get anything figured out. They went back to Jim Harbaugh again. You know, after Harbaugh had said, "No, I'm staying at Michigan," and then yeah, they were flirting with each other once again here. So that went down, it, whatever, it fell through the deal. Sean Payton's the guy. I think that's where I was really saying it's a blessing in disguise. To me, it's a blessing in disguise not to knock on Jim Harbaugh, which you know I would like to do. Uh, but one, I think Sean Payton's the right hire for this team. Two, I think you got this type of money invested in Russell Wilson, the assets you traded away to get Russell Wilson. Like, yeah, uh, d- double down, whatever you want to call, spend more money to make that investment work. It's going to be worth it, let alone with the guy who I would go out of the options that are out there is the best to do this. And even out of the options that aren't out there, I'd still might go, he might be the best to do this, right? I mean, if we start to go to the coaches that are coaching other teams right now and you'd go, I don't know if anybody's really better than <laughs> Sean Payton to sure. fix this situation, you know, so that's where uh, I love it. And, yeah, it's expensive. So what? But Sean Payton is a quarterback whisperer, you know. He took a guy like Drew Brees who, again, is phenomenal, but, like, let's not forget the Chargers were like, we don't want him. He's not good enough for us. And he doesn't throw the ball outside the numbers and down the field good for us where we feel like we can win a Super Bowl. Sean Payton's like, well, I'll take him. I know what he'll do good, and I'll orchestrate a whole offense around it. That's where he's going to be brilliant, you know, let alone – the, the, this is the, the lost art of what people don't realize with great coaches is their, their ability to build confidence within the team and then within players, right? That good coaches make their stars feel like, man, I'm the f-ing man. Nothing can beat me, right? They, that's what they do. 
You know, and and that's where I, Russell lost that. You know, whether it's after the injury in Seattle and then, of course, this year, it's like a double whammy. And I think Sean Payton can build him back up to at least get him as close as anybody could to the old Russell Wilson we used to see. Sean Payton has talked about Russell Wilson since being hired. NOLA.com. NOLA. Has this quote, says, Russell is a hard worker, has played at a high level, and won a lot of games in this league. The pressure is on us to put a good run game together, reduce the degree of difficulty on his position. I'm excited about him. So you did a good job, and I think you were ahead of most people out there looking at what Nathaniel Hackett, who was getting a lot of heat at the time. Yeah. And you looked at the tape and you said, "Eh, Nathaniel Hackett, his offense is getting people open. Russell Wilson is not throwing to those open people. Right. Do you think Sean Payton will be able to get that out of Russell Wilson? And like, what will he have to do? If the guys were open, yeah. then they were doing their job. Yeah. How do you get guys more open or, I guess, just make Russ trust it? That, that, that's, that's, that's what it is, what you said. And see, this goes back, again, to the building of the confidence. You know, gr- coaches are great salesmen, and they're great at, you know, the great coaches, as we've discussed all the time, Hey, a lot of them, they all got the same plays. It's the little intricacies and how you could sell the play to your team and just the little detail of a play that can make a big difference, right? I was giving, a, like, an example. Like, a play, you know, I'd run in – I was at the Tennessee Titans in 2008 with Terry Kerry Collins. We'd call this one play. we call it 30 times of the year. Never, never open. Never, never. You know, I go, man, I'd see other teams hitting this. What the I go to Denver with Josh McDaniels, it's the same play, right? But he's just got a little nuance and how to look at the play. And then, hey, wait, when they play cover three, receiver, I want you to run the route just a little like this. And if it's cover two, it's the same route, but just run it a little different against cover two. And then all of a sudden, I'm going, holy shit, Brendan Marshall's open every time we call this fucking play. We couldn't hit this play in Tennessee the year before. Now Josh McDaniels sold us the play, gave us confidence, showed us Brady running the play, how good he was at it, all that. Gave the receivers confidence, and if you just do what I say, you'll be open. And all of a sudden, it's unstoppable. And I'm going, man, this play sucks before he put it in, right? I'm going, this play is never open. Yeah. Never. I've, I've run this play 80 times in my life, never fucking open. And then now I go to training camp with the Broncos and Josh McDaniel. I'm going, oh, my gosh, we're hitting this play 30 yards a clip here. It's unbelievable. So that's where Sean Payton's going to come in. The salesman aspect, rebuilding the confidence of Russell Wilson. He's going to show him clips. of, Hey, look at Drew. Drew's throwing this play. We got 95,000 yards on this play. You got a stronger arm than Drew. You can throw this in there. Come on. Come on, big boy. Look, I got tapes of you from from Seattle three years ago. Here, you're same play. It's a you can do this, right? He's gonna get him, he's gonna sell all of that. So that's where it's gonna get Russell to buy in. So it's the salesman. And then, you know, again that way that we talk about so well too, where like Sean was playing quarterback with Drew those all those years. You know, it was like if Drew got hit, Sean was like, oh, man, I'm rattled. I'm getting hit out here today. Right? So he's going to be in the boat, in the the fight with them. That's going to make Russell feel good. And, you know, I think between that, selling the the plays, and just rebuilding Russell's confidence in himself, which is a thing, too. I mean, I don't care who you are. You know, Belichick and McDaniels, they had a – make Brady feel good sometimes too. Sure. I think it's one of the reasons he was like, I've had enough of this place. I'd like to go somewhere else with a fresh outlook and have Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich give me some finally and somebody tell me how good I am, right? You know, everybody needs that. It's the NFL. I had this conversation with Jason Garrett a few weeks ago. Confidence is such a big thing, you know, and the state of the mind of the football player so then he can go out and believe he's good and I'm going to be good today and – and all those positive things, and that's where I think Sean Payton's going to be great, let alone I will be shocked, all right? Mark my words one more thing. I will be shocked if their first marquee move of the offseason is not offensive line because that's the other thing he's going to do. He's going to go, oh, he's going to go, look, I, oh, hey, don't just read my plays. I got all these big f- up here. Don't worry. Just like Drew had in New Orleans. Just listen to what I'm saying and look downfield. Don't worry. We'll protect you. So that'll be another thing he's going to take off his, his mental framework, right? 
You know, where this year that was on his mind too. Wait, I'm learning a new playbook. I don't know about these plays. I'm not sure, you know, and I'm not being protected and we can't run the ball. So all of that, and Sean's going to calm all that shit down. And that's where I will be shocked if Russell Wilson doesn't have a bounce back. Oh, f- he looks closer to the old Russell Wilson. So if they do that, their defense is already exactly. awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Gut right now. Yeah. On February first, right. twenty twenty three. Right. Are the Denver Playoffs. Broncos a playoff team? I'm I'm gonna I'll say it. Sure. You're already I'll say it. I mean, gonna... I'm just a, such a believer in Sean Payton because yeah. his 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 coaching goes beyond the offense. You know, like a Shanahan or a McDaniel or you know, whoever McVeigh. And they know also because they're so good at offense, they also know what makes a good defense, right? Mm. So they always that's why those guys always have these good coordinators, right? Because they're like, when I play that guy, he's annoying. I, don't, I can't figure out his rules, and they do some things to me that always give me problems, right? So that's the other thing. Like, I'd be shocked if they don't have a top-notch defensive mind in there. Hmm. Whether that's a Vic Fangio, maybe he'll come back. I don't know. you know, Or EJ Evero, who was there. Right. But uh, the, the, he's had guys like Dennis Allen, right, in his past as a D coordinator. Had Greg Williams before that who was a very good, creative defense of mine. So I'd be shocked if he doesn't bring that. And Sean always brings a toughness and a physicality to his team. For a guy that throws for 5,000 yards a lot, his teams were always physical. And, uh, yeah, I would be – they will be in the playoff conversation next year. Right. Right, maybe I don't want to say playoffs, but playoff conversation for oh, well, sure. Okay. I'm backing well, off. Totally backing off. Like first, that just took all the Four minutes away. later. <laughs> Pete, if you, if you share this clip on social media, cut that last part because that is a total backtrack. <laughs> Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Fareed, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims, Unbuttoned. Peace out.